Hey everybody, we've got a very special episode for you today. We'll be talking Pickle Darling's Laundromat, which is a great new album that was released this year on Father Daughter Records. We're going to kick things off with an interview with Lucas, aka Pickle Darling, and then we'll have a regular episode analysing the songs on the album. Okay. So you ready? <laughs> Sweet. One, two, three. Sweet. Okay. You can tell both Sweet. musicians. Yeah. It's on the beat. <laughs> Perfectly in time. Um, okay. Well, I'm just going to go straight into my... Oh my gosh, I've wrote interview questions. Um, the first question I wrote is like the question that every artist always gets asked, which is like, when you're writing a song, what comes first? The music or the lyrics? <laughs> um, which is, it's kind of this like generic question, but I think it's good because everyone has a different answer kind of. I think it's both are happening quite independently of each other. Um, yep. And then, like, I'm always coming up with lyric ideas or whatever, um, and I just have a list of lines and interesting kind of couplets and stuff, um, mm-hmm. and then I'm working on music, and then I try and eventually piece it all together when I have, like, oh, I've got a song idea, I've got a melody, and then I scroll through my notepad of, like... <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Are lyrics. you like a notes app kind of yeah, like definitely. lyric writer? Yeah, I've become the same. It's it's so good. Yeah. It's just like, yeah, it makes it so much easier. Hmm. Like, did you have like um like notebooks when you were like a teenager of like lyrics and stuff? Um, maybe when I was really when I was really young, I I just had a notepad of just like I'd just be drawing. Like when I was a kid, yeah. I'd draw like fake album covers or like like track lists and stuff of imaginary Whoa. albums and stuff like that um with with these like like your albums yeah. that you were gonna create i that don't know so just cool. like some fantasy band um, yeah yeah but i don't know, i don't think i really wrote lyrics and uh i mean every now and then i would write it on like a piece of paper and then hide the piece of paper somewhere <laughs> but yeah. i would never i didn't have like a i wasn't a cool kid that had like a notepad and walked around like <laughs> observing the world and like oh here's some interesting thoughts i was always like yeah. just like i would have um pre-smartphone when you just normal phones where you could only send texts and stuff if yeah. i had a <laughs> you know, people probably don't even remember this but i would like write a text to myself and then send it to myself and that was how i would save ideas yeah. and stuff i i did that as well that's so funny because i had like a um yeah like an old nokia phone mm. and i would do that too <laughs> yeah <laughs> I I, it's hard to remember even a time before apps even like a notes app it's like, oh no this is a luxury Just yeah, having yeah, an yeah. App. the funny thing was with the text to yourself it would like it would appear twice because <laughs> <it was like laughs> yeah for me i was like sending and receiving it yeah <laughs> those were the days yeah, like I, whenever I go to my parents' house, I find these like old lyric books, and they're really embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So recently, you've just done a zine fair, and I I thought your idea was really cool. It was like song prompts or like prompts mm. for songwriters to write a song. Do you want to talk a, a little bit about it? Like, what what would be like an example of something that was included in the zine? Um, so it would be I would try and make it really practical in a way that you didn't even have to really be creative at all to start with so the first yeah. one was like i sold out all my zines so i can't actually look at it <laughs> but um <laughs> the first one was like oh what was the last tv show you, you watch what's the third to last episode title mm, um that's good and the title of the episode is the first line of the song and then the yeah. second line will be scroll through your text and find two lines of a similar length or whatever the stuff yeah. like that so wow that's cool the stuff you put together might be kind of kind of nonsense but um i don't know yeah, yeah. But, but maybe just, not just quite kind of a mad lib sort of like yeah, way yeah of assembling yeah. stuff together um yeah yeah and then did it become like does it become more abstract over the course of the scene or is it i think so yeah i think there's a few it's like that for most of it, but some of it's also like one of the prompts was um, just like looking at look at two strangers that you see out in public 
that aren't interacting at all and then imagine them having an imaginary conversation and what yeah. would that conversation be or whatever why aren't they talking yeah. to each other like mm. just like so a few of them were more abstract kind of um song topic ideas like that um yeah but most of it was just like oh take take this word and this word think of a word that um put a verb here use the same yep. verb um that's stuff cool. like that yeah yeah yeah, I really, I like that idea a lot. It reminds me of um, something I studied at uni were these text pieces by Karl Heinz Stockhausen. I don't know if you ever had to study Stockhausen. No. <laughs> it's, it's like this really weird like German guy. Um, but he had uh, like a bunch of text pieces and there's one called, uh, what is it called? Meeting Point, which is like for an ensemble. And it's like everyone starts at the same point. And then it's like generate turns and then diverge from each other and then end at the same point. Oh. And like that was the piece. So it's kind of like in a way like you're like, even though it's like a song prompt for somebody else, you're kind of like writing the composition or whatever. <laughs> yeah, you're, it's there's always kind of chaos in there, but you're kind of directing whatever chaos. Like yeah, there's still yeah, an yeah. element of randomness in there, um, mm. but still with direction. Yeah. And I think I quite yeah. like... I'm such a big fan of like people demystifying stuff. It's like, oh yeah, writing a song isn't. Oh, yeah. Maybe for some people, it is, but for me, it's not this like um, emotionally cathartic thing. Yeah, it's like it becomes that when I get close to finishing a song and I'm listening to it, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm feeling something. But when I'm making yeah. it, it's very like cut and paste it's... and quite practical and just like problem yeah. solving and stuff. It's like it. It's a technical thing, kind of. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's what I try to tell, like, because some of my students have to do compositions for school and stuff. And, like, one of them is just, like, she just doesn't know, like, how to get started or she didn't know how to get started. I was just kind of, like, trying to remind her, like, you know, it's just, like, notes. Like, you just, like, put them together in whatever order. If you like the sound of it, that's good. If you don't, you can change it. Like, mm. it's not, like, people treat it like it's this, like, magic act, but it's really not like that. <laughs> yeah it can be like that but it's mostly not like that <laughs> yeah and i think like for me it's like the the part of it that takes the most skill is actually listening because for me like composing a song is all about problem solving it's like okay this line has created yeah. a problem or well, this this corporation has created something for me to like try and resolve and it's more about like knowing how to listen out for stuff like that like knowing how to hear something and being like why doesn't this sound as good as it could sound and trying yeah. to like do that or why doesn't this resolve in a way that is as satisfying as i want it to be and just kind of almost like scientifically trying to go through yep yeah um, there's a lot of trial and error yeah like figuring out where things fit it's a bit like a puzzle in some yeah. ways. and sometimes it's like you'll you'll get like three quarters of a song done i don't i don't know if you find this but then it's like oh i need to add it like add an extra little bit here and then that part will take so long to like yeah <laughs> to get right like 90 yeah. percent of the thing can be done and then it's just yeah it's so hard <laughs> i think it happens the, like i've tried not to write like this anymore but i used to write where i would compose a whole piece of music have the essentially the backing track entirely finish and then be like okay now i have to come up with words and a melody and and try and squeeze a song into that and it's like it's like trying to like um i don't know it's like trying to put like egg into it's an like, already baked cake <laughs> like you're yeah, trying to yeah. get it right in there and and then pretend it, it was part of it the whole time <laughs> um it's like it's, um ikea furniture like it has to be like um you can't like fully tighten everything like right at the get-go you gotta leave it like a little bit loose <laughs> yeah so i think <laughs> now i've tried it. to like make sure the core ingredients are like in there from the start i'm like okay when i start a song now i'm way more like strategic and like get yeah. the core melody down and get the lyrics down as early as possible because mm -hmm. otherwise when it when it happens right at the end it takes like half a year to finish something <laughs> Yeah, that's so true. Yeah. Actually, one thing I wanted to ask you about, this is something I've seen you talk about on social media, which is like arranging a song, but like thinking about mixing in the arrangement stage of a song. 
Mm. So like having like a nice balance of like frequencies and stuff. When I read you post that, I was like, that's actually really helpful. Like <laughs> being oh, a yeah. bit forward thinking. I think what was I? I I'm trying to remember what I was saying. It was. I think it was just kind of like you know, don't put all of, like, your instruments in a song all in the same kind of register because then they're just going to clash in the mixing phase of yeah, that's making right. it. I and I, like when I a... listen to your s- stuff as well, it's like there's, like, all these really high, like, synths and stuff and there's, like, these really low sounds. It's, like, got a really good balance. And, yeah, I think it makes sense to think about that before you even start recording. You know? Yeah. And I think it makes more sense with your, like, if your main way of making music is is sitting in front of a laptop with a microphone and like recording it in logic pro or whatever. And you're like, you're thinking of music as layers right from the start. Whereas if you're like, maybe if you're used to playing in bands and playing, jamming in a room with a band and writing songs like that, maybe it, that doesn't come yeah as naturally. And you have to problem solve a bit more because it's like naturally two guitars fill up the same space. But yeah, yeah. Um, totally. Yeah. I think that's that's what happens where it's like oh you can't get a mix to sound good or muddy but it's mostly about like leaving as much space as possible um yeah and yeah definitely yeah yeah and especially like yeah and giving yourself like space around where the vocals are and like the range and stuff is yeah really yeah. important um another thing i wanted to ask you about is so like on this album laundromat which i haven't said the name of oh yeah (laughs) i'll probably have to do an intro uh and this is pickle darling aka lucas um (laughs) there's a lot of like shorter songs i was just wondering if like um i i actually really enjoyed reading like the liner notes on uh bandcamp for this um album i thought they were really nicely written um there was was something um, about there was sammy main that wrote those um cool yeah. They they write for like gold flake paint and they do a lot of music oh, right. and stuff. So yeah, really yeah. nice. It was like so. It's yeah. It's so nice to have like a good liner note or like a thoughtful liner note. And having someone else write it almost. for me is that like <laughs> like it made me sound like a genius <laughs> just reading it. Like, oh wow, <laughs> who's this musician? <laughs> I I love the stuff they were talking about with like the really short stories. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and I was just wondering like if um. Is that something like that you enjoy when you're consuming art? Is like like short? Do you like short stories? Do you like short films? Yeah, definitely. I think. I mean, I don't. I feel like I don't watch a lot of short films. Um, yeah. I don't know where like where you watch short films. <laughs> um, but I think short stories. Um, yeah, I think I I'm quite a big fan of short stories where it's like you have to um i don't know because i was reading this lydia davis book and some of the stories are like three sentences long yeah um and it's like okay there's still there's not the same sort of story arc or anything but it's like there's still something that is like they still end in a different place where they started and and to do that in such a short period of time is like it's quite really amazing. impressive. Yeah. And yeah. I think I think reading stuff like that or like that kind of feels like gives me permission to try and like let something be. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I think maybe because I don't necessarily think of music as like. Um, for me, it's not a thing that's meant to just be kind of like. Not that it's a bad thing, but I I don't make it in a way that's to be passively kind of enjoyed. I would like it to be like you want to actively engage treat it like, with it, like you're yeah, like you're reading a book, and you've got to be like if if you if you stop paying attention for five seconds, you're gonna miss something. Yeah. Um. Yeah, definitely. Like you can't just kind of vibe to it. Yeah, the audience has to like kind of meet the meet the thing. Yeah. What am I trying to say here? But yeah, almost like when you're watching like a slow movie, you like have to be like actively thinking about what is happening and it's kind of like becomes part of it. Yeah. Um, and I think yeah, also that's, not that's cool. feeling the pressure to like make something long or like, mm-hmm. I think the whole, I guess like verse, chorus, verse, chorus, ending, bridge, then chorus, whatever. It's like, 
they're quite arbitrary sort of structures and yeah and definitely. like quite um i guess like useful for a lot of reasons but they don't seem natural to me for the way i make music because for me yeah. it's like oh if i'm writing like there has to be a specific reason i'm repeating something not just mm-hmm. because it's the name of the song there has to be like yeah i think if i repeat a section i'll repeat it for like five minutes and make a point out of it but Mm -hmm. never just because it's the chorus or something yeah that's interesting actually yeah like the way you repeat lyrics it's almost um yeah it's not so much in a chorus like way um like the end of head terrarium you have that like repeated refrain Mm. that's like um yeah that's probably the closest thing to a chorus on the on the album actually yeah but it's it yeah. feels more like a um it's almost like um like in a Sufjan stevens kind of way where he he'll have like a line that he repeats a lot mm-hmm. like an impossible soul or whatever where it's like oh yeah you know, boy we could do so much together and it just and the instrumentation is transforming and it kind of like you just keep thinking about the line and like thinking about i guess the different ways and the different meanings of it and changing the music underneath it and kind of recontextualizing yeah. the same melody which I think he yeah. does super well. It's like it's like a yeah. classical music thing, eh? Where it's like, oh, these yeah, totally these themes that come in, and you constantly change the context of it. I guess. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Bit of motivic development. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, one other thing I wanted to ask you about was uh, working in retail because I used to work in retail. Um, thankfully, don't anymore. But um. I find when you're working in retail, you have like a lot of time to think. Mm. <laughs> so I was wondering were there like songs and ideas that you came up with from this record, like while you were like standing like at a register? <laughs> yeah, I think my brain is because I actually because I work in a record store and it's like sometimes it's like sometimes it's just like a normal shitty retail job, but like I still as a whole quite enjoy it, and I think yeah. I like having. I like having quite a normal job that keeps me, um, like, in the world of, like, you know, just the general public. <laughs> like, Yeah, yeah, that is a nice aspect of it. Yeah, where it's like, oh, yeah, I am kind of, like, engaging with people that yeah. are, like, just a lot. And you kind of get to know people and get to know, like, regular customers over over years. And, yeah. Um, it's like, oh, yeah, some of these people I've known longer than my friends. Yeah, that's <laughs> crazy. Weird. Um, yeah. But I think part of what I what helps about it, like, having kind of a, like, maybe if, yeah, I feel like I, it would be weird if I was, I was, like, a full-time musician and I'm, like, I don't know what I would write about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I feel like my do? song topics are always, like, I, I they're just naturally quite maybe grounded in quite normal like sh- shitty mundane life um yeah definitely in a really nice way i find like it's not like this um it's not like a romanticized version it's kind of like this it's like you're elevating mundane things by kind of talking about them which mm. is a nice like a really nice thing yeah because i feel like um, there's actually not yeah. much i feel like most music is about catharsis in some way but i feel like yeah most of life isn't that most of life is like (laughs) yeah kind of just in the same thing and like if you if you don't focus in enough on each moment like oh it's oh shit like especially now once you're once you've left school when you're an adult for 10 years it's like okay if you don't really like intentionally try and think about the different things that are happening each day like yeah it's like 10 years goes by and it's like boom. i mean yeah jeez i feel that <laughs> yeah <laughs> so i think music is uh, a good way for me to keep like um like yeah. make life feel slower because it's like okay every day i'm always trying to like look around or listen to something listen to something someone said or be attentive to like mm-hmm. like every moment or something and then i don't know i think yeah. that's just like helps me in my life (laughs) no that's a it's definitely like a good um yeah it's like a a good mindset to have 
And in some ways it feels like that's kind of like, um, it's almost like this kind of mission statement of like how to live um, mm. that you present on the album, which has, it's really like a comforting, uh, nice feeling. Um, yeah, speaking of catharsis, um, I see on your uh, Twitter, you've been getting into U2 a lot recently. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I've no this not even not even recently that was my first favorite band really well yeah. actually actually like maybe when I was a kid my first favorite band was the Bee Gees who awesome. now I've also just gotten back into but the first band band that I really got into and got to know the whole discography was U2 wow. I think that's still like um I know they're not very cool to like but I think yeah. in terms of um also like my my whole idea of like the story arc of a band as well like yeah. they were the f- the first band that I really followed closely and got to know the whole story of like, oh, this is the Arctic Baby moment of like, really yeah, yeah, like the and different and eras. Yeah, I think. Yeah, um, I loved um, how to dismantle an atomic bomb uh, when I was a kid. Like, yeah, that was same. Like one of my favorite albums. And when it was its ten year anniversary, I organized a concert like gig um, where I was like. Okay, like every band on this bill has to cover one of their songs. Um, and then it got to a couple of days before I messaged like one of the bands that was playing. I was like, okay, so like what song are you, you guys doing? And the guy was like, oh, I thought you were joking. <laughs> I was like, no. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, yeah, and really randomly it turned out that you two were playing in Sydney the night that that uh that oh my God. happened <laughs> so if you'd like kind of hear the actual youtube concert like if you went outside <laughs> that would have been amazing crazy yeah no, i but have I, a, a I very love unironic a very like genuinely yeah. unironic love for you too yeah i don't think they're like, perfect i think they have like the last few yeah. albums are pretty shit but yeah. i still i still give them time because i know like what some of the previous music is like capable of so i'll still listen to the new albums and give it a shot and be like okay there is some there's still some like good stuff in there but, yeah i yeah. feel like yeah they're always kind of like swinging for a home run kind of like they're always yeah. like super ambitious like aiming for this huge like bombastic kind of um cathartic moment i guess they have quieter songs as well hmm. but um yeah but like some of their songs are really beautiful uh, have you heard the story behind the song miracle drug from how to dismantle an atomic bomb it's like it's about a guy from their hometown who was um he's paralyzed he, right yeah that's yeah. right and and but his mom like would talk to him and like teach him things and mm. um they created some drug that enabled him to move like certain muscles in his face or something and um yeah, he he ended up being able to write and he wrote this like whole like book of poems um and it won some award or something. But it's like this really beautiful Damn. story. And like yeah, so like the I don't know, their songs are I think um yeah, they do more than what people give them credit for now. Yeah, I think they're a lot least. more um like more personal than people necessarily like. Like, yeah. yeah, they're a giant stadium band, but also, like, they're not, like, maybe, maybe like, in their good period, they weren't, like, just a normal, the whole point was, like, making the stadium feel like a, a tiny room. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I think, yeah, like, I, I think a lot of, like, um, like, there's still an element of, um, I think the the way that the influence on me has still lasted is like because they were my first favorite band, and they were always like, "Yeah, we're not trying to be cool. We're trying to yeah. like make you feel something, even if it's quite uncool or if it's quite um, bombastic or if it makes us like I don't know seem too earnest when no one else yeah. around, around us is being earnest." So I think that's still something that is like stuck with me. I think hmm. it's a good uh, it's a good message yeah mm. <laughs> yeah well I feel like that's a good spot to end it on the U2 um. <laughs> yeah I kind of man I could I, I want to do a whole interview series on U2 I would love to like yeah you should do it <laughs> just like interview yeah. lots of random artists and then be like 
So what do you and think of you two? <laughs> and then I spend the whole interview trying to convince them that you two are great. I play them the songs. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, but... you should definitely do that. <laughs> yeah. Zeropa, I think, is the best album. The one that I've, like, slowly realized is the best one. It's like... Yeah, I need, to, I need to check that out. Really, I, I just knew how to dismantle an Atomic Bomb and then, like, some of the hits. Mm. Um, but I love that album. Uh, do a deep dive. Do. Yeah. yeah. Cool. All right. <laughs> well, um, yeah. I mean, everybody listen to Pickle Darling, Laundromat. There and will you be too like as well. A... Listen to them. <laughs> yeah, listen. Yeah, this is a little known band called U2. <laughs> I'll give Chuck them a shout a out. <laughs> yeah, buy give this stuff follow. on Bandcamp. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They're, yeah, they're struggling. They're struggling. Mm. In monthly listeners on Spotify, it's pretty <laughs> low. So, um. <laughs> alrighty. Um, yeah, have a good day. Um, yeah, cool. Yeah. <laughs> nice to chat. Yeah, thanks for chatting. Hello and welcome everybody to a, another edition of your favorite Music Rules show titled Music Rules. That's right, it's the Music Rules podcast starring Fenn and Jack. That's right, it's the show you tune into to listen to two of the biggest brains in Sydney talk about music, to have some jokes, to share some of the most amazing and most special, awesome and excellent artists that are going right now. And today is no exception. That's right. And by biggest brains in Sydney, we mean that we are nerds who are also of a large stature. Mm, We're using brains in the 90s sense. That's right. Quite, quite, um, quite heavy heads. <laughs> we're mega minds over here. We're Jimmy Neutrons. Mm. Um, and the, uh, the artist that we're talking about today is uh, an artist from New Zealand. Uh, I'm a big fan of their music. We indeed uh, shared a label for a brief moment in time. Um, ah. when they released an album on the Slovakian tape label Z Tapes, which is kind of how I uh, discovered their music initially. Um, and the artist's name is Pickle Darling. Woo! Label Woo. mates. That's so cool. It's such a good way to find music that way because it's yeah, sort of definitely. like, it's like being picked for the same kind of, a similar aesthetic, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah their music is... I call it kind of like intentionally small scale um Mm -hmm. but it doesn't mean that it's uh unambitious it's definitely very ambitious music it's filled with life and color um but the songs are short and it's often dealing with sort of every day the quotidien as the french might say Mm. kind of topics of like everyday life and there's a lot of stream of consciousness lyrics um it feels similar in a way to kind of an indie movie or like especially indie movies of like the um the 2000s were called mumblecore um that's like the genre Mm. where it's a lot of conversations it's a lot of um situations that maybe when you read the synopsis it doesn't sound like that uh crazy but when you watch it it has like all of this meaning uh based on um you know uh tracking the mundane and finding the meaning and the beauty in that so i feel like kind of conceptually that's the realm of uh pickle darling's music that makes and i me really th- enjoy it makes me think of napoleon dynamite that's the first movie to come to mind yeah, I think well, Napoleon Dynamite is probably more surreal than than the sort of genre I'm thinking of. Mm. I don't know if you've ever watched anything by Richard Linklater, but like the movie Boyhood, for example, or Dazed and Confused. Mm. That's kind of like the quintessential. Right. Uh, or there's a movie called Slacker. Um, yeah. All of those. Really, really good. I, I, um, I haven't seen those and um, I'm drinking from... Uh, you I'm... may have watched a Richard Linklater movie entitled School of Rock. Oh, really? Well, I, yes. I have indeed seen School of Rock, but no, I... That's uh, kind of a more mainstream. It's <laughs> yeah. Not quite mumblecore, but um, yeah, anyway, just, you know, like think of, you know, uh, independent movies, um, maybe starring Mark Duplass. What about He Died With a Falafel in His Hand? That seems probably right. Yeah, like an Australian version of that. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I know why I um, thought of that. Yeah, and 
like the uh, color on these uh, the albums that Lucas has created. It's often using instruments like ukulele or like glockenspiel or like these kind of like Casio synths and things that are like I guess what you might call twee, but I think it um, I think that it gets used in a really interesting way and mm. really fun and ambitious way. Uh, cool. The album we're talking about today is called Laundromat. It was released this year through the label Father Daughter Records. Um, it's a really short album, 24 minutes long. Um, a lot of the songs are less than two minutes. And the general theme of the album is kind of about these like small acts of love and kindness and how they manifest in the world. Because a lot of the time when people express their love towards another person, it's not through saying like, I love you. It's often through like you know, mm. making somebody a meal or like doing their laundry, for example. Um, and I think maybe we should just go straight into a song, actually, because the title track really, um, it really kind of, yeah, solidifies that message in a nice way. So, awesome. I watch every person in the world place their love from the world to the casket. curious to hear your yeah your first impressions um yeah as you mentioned to me that you hadn't really listened to this much yes yet usually so. we do a bit of pre-preparation before this stuff um we listen to the albums that we suggest but i've just been so flat out but i don't know it's kind of nice to just hear it first Have the first impression yeah. yeah um first impression is i often don't really hear a new zealand accent in music yeah, true. Um, it's Flight like, of the Concords, that's it. <laughs> yeah, really. And that's like such a, obviously, very different very different thing to this. Um, but yeah. yeah, it's really like really interesting enunciation of words and kind of like particularly in that chorus. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. The video did remind me a lot because, yeah, as I've mentioned before in the pod, I work um, in schools, like I work in like with children. So I'm, I'm, I hear a lot of uh kids music and just like the niceness of the video and the like i guess like the fact that the words were there and some of the graphics kind of made me think of those but in like a much more nice way kind of in the same way that animal collective makes me feel like it's it's sort yeah. of like a little bit um uh, it's so it's so loaded to say the word like childish because I feel like that usually has a negative connotation. But yeah, I it's don't very... think of it negatively though. Like mm. it, it means that like they're tapped into kind of this pure form of expression. Yeah. Uh, in my opinion. What, what's, and it's, what's the yeah, other it's word not... though? It's like another word like for like, I guess like innocent or like, like un, un, it's like un, un, unworried. It's, it's very like not cynical, I feel yeah. like. 
That's um, true. Yeah, which is really like a very, I think a very nice quality in music. Like it makes you feel really good to listen to. Yeah. And especially the with the lyrical content as well, like the presentation of the music and like it's just all like so it's not afraid to sound pretty and be like in a major key and like have all these like fun you know nice sounds and mm. yeah um and and then and then it, the chords are like a one five four going on yeah which is one yeah. of the most nice i think like lots of like weezer songs use that yeah and you know me i'm a wheeze head <laughs> you love weezer yeah um don't we all secretly um <laughs> not me openly <laughs> um yeah i love the lyrics of this song i think like the um like the kind of opening um stanza is such a good kind of mission statement for the album as a whole mm. let me just find the exact lyrics so that i can kind of I, um, I watch every person in the world place their love from the womb to the casket in morning coffees and washing baskets I love that. I think that's such a nice, like, um, encapsulation of how people express love in the world. Because mm. um, it is. It's true. It's like, you know, you make somebody a drink or something, you know. Mm. you Your friend comes over, you make them a cup of tea. Like, mm. that is like a, a way of expressing, you know, kind of this comfort and this, like, uh, you know, Mm. I'm grateful that you exist. Here, I'm making you a hot drink. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> Without saying it. And then, yeah, like, I guess, you know, doing somebody's washing for them or, like, whatever. That's, like, another form of uh, another act of love. Yeah. And then another thing that I really like um, is, like, this idea of the laundromat because it is this really interesting kind of in-between place where you're not at home but, like, all of your, like, private belongings are, like, sitting in this machine turning around in there Mm. alongside, like, all of these other people's, like, most private kind of you know undergarments etc yes and it's kind of this it's this place of like this communal kind of coming together of individual lives this cross-section of individual lives um which doesn't happen that often like you know people don't share their private lives that much together like there's less kind of community spaces than there used to be i feel like Mm. and like everybody is increasingly isolated and atomized so it becomes this kind of uh yeah, like a, almost like a metaphor for like this sense of like, you know, giving and receiving love within the world and within, you know, our community, within, you know, hmm. interpersonal relationships of any kind, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I've definitely felt those connections at the laundromat. At the laundromat. Yeah. yeah. It's like a... I haven't used the laundromat in a long time. <laughs> I, I used it a lot during COVID because it was like there was these crazy floods happening in Wollongong. Actually, yeah. they're happening everywhere. In it, like yeah. on the east coast of Australia, but yeah, it was like it it rained for like a couple of weeks, and there was literally nowhere to like dry anything. Yeah, so we had to go to the laundromat, and it was always so packed because everyone's like, "What the hell? I can't dry my clothes." Yeah. Um, and yeah, it was also like a little bit of the discomfort from, I guess, mask wearing and just the. Um, yeah, that would have been a really interesting yeah. kind of social space to exist in yeah like at that time you you know the sort of thing like where people come in and they're like they don't know they didn't know where to stand or what to do yeah and when you go into spaces like there's a sign in code is like but then you got the hands full it's just like yeah and i just remember like asking people like what (laughs) what machines were being used and (laughs) and then them telling me and it's sort of like yeah just helping each other I'll through this the, confusing, horrible situation. That sounds lovely. I'll, I'll tell you the most psycho thing that you can do at a laundromat. Yes, please. You, can go to the, you go to the machine that is just finished mm-hmm. and the person is not there to pick up their clothing. You take out all of their wet clothing, you dump it on top of the machine and then yeah. you stuff your stuff in there. That's so good. I've definitely seen that happen. That's that's a classic, like, mm. that's a classic laundromat move. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Definitely not the like pleasant, uh, <laughs> the pleasant one that I had. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, cool. I reckon let's keep going on to the next track. Yes, please. What's next, Ben? Head Terrarium, it's called. Ooh. Intriguing title and an even more intriguing video. Intriguing song length. Yes. 
Compared three minutes and 51 seconds. One of the most intriguing lengths that a song can be. Mm-hmm. Actually, one thing I'll say before we go into this one. I, a thing that I really appreciate is um, Lucas's ability to condense these kind of complicated feelings into just a couple of lines. So, mm. like, I really love the, uh, the liner notes for this album on Bandcamp, which kind of talk about... Um, a writer called Lydia Davis who writes short stories, some of which are only like two sentences long. Mm. Um, and there is such a skill to being able to say a lot without using tons of words. And I struggle extremely a lot with this. And I, whenever I write a song, I always write like 10 too many verses and whatever. So <laughs> when somebody can like explain a complex idea in a really short way, in the way that good poetry like can do, then mm. I find that super impressive. So... That's one of the things that impresses me about this album. Finn, I, I think okay. your song Pop Star had the yes. perfect amount of verses. Uh, yes. Well, Don't you ever feel okay. self-conscious about that one? <laughs> Best song ever written. Thank you. <laughs> okay, let's uh, do Head Terrarium. Right. You got the video? I'm ready to go. Okay, three, two, one, Head, head Terrarium. terrarium.
that's definitely my favorite so far. Yeah. Um, out of the two songs that we listened to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's your favorite of the two <laughs> maybe the next one will be my new favorite um but no that had all the things that i really seek out in music like it had yeah. this um really great sense of build and momentum and every section had something a little bit different going on the yeah. outro was like a bit out of nowhere and that's what made it cool and then yeah, I all the, the bar lengths that... were like you know not really four all the time and yeah, yeah. Yeah. There's this beautiful like cyclical like um phrase at the end of it that's like dun dun da 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 something like that. Yeah. Um yeah, I love that outro, it's so nice. Um and the lyrics too. Well I'm not as pretty as I like Yeah, I kind of forgot that there we'll was... Just take turns playing that. I kind of forgot that there was a video happening because I was just yeah. sort of listening and reading the words, which is yeah. good because, you know, it's a... The video was really cool. It did As look somebody cool. who's listened to the song and uh, read the words before. I think I've seen the video Maybe before I need to do well, these things one at a time. There was like a really, like, it kind of starts out with this, like, um, uh, this, like, cardboard, almost like Warhammer, like... Um, nature setting mm. uh where pickle darling is kind of looking in almost as as a god in this world mm. um and then it pans out and then it's like looking through the window at this like crazy mannequin which has um uh like a phone camera i don't know you should just watch the video really it's awesome i saw the and first it reminds me bit. of like videos from like the like late 2000s like indie videos where it was just like the most inexplicable thing that would like it's really inexplicable stuff was always happening in videos like grizzly bears videos i don't know if mm. you like the band grizzly bear yeah yeah like i their, love grizzly bear their music videos were like so crazy the video also the reminds me a bit of uh i think it's like a ben lee tune or like oh no yeah. no josh pike it was a josh pike song <laughs> where there's also like um yeah josh looking out over like a paper mache little world yeah nice yeah it's kind of like, um, yeah, like something you would see on Rage, which is the Australian like music video like um, program. Mm. You'd see on Rage at like, you know, like ten thirty p.m. or something, and you'd be like, "What was that?" Has Has Rage like, ever played your songs before? No, but I've never submitted it. Um, They've never played me, <laughs> and I've submitted every time. I don't. I have no really? idea why. Because I, well, I would think that I don't that know how they choose it. Yeah, it's like ev ev every every a secret. Every boomer goes, oh, Triple J would love your music. And then they go, oh, <laughs> your videos are crazy. Rage would love your music. And neither yeah, of them yeah, do. Yeah. And <laughs> I've had it. Let's let's talk about this song a little bit. Um, yeah, I also, as you were saying before, the structure of it is really satisfying. Mm. I love when like that kind of synthy like element comes in and then it just keeps speeding up and speeding up and speeding up until like we're in this new section mm. and you kind of don't even realize it as it's happening and then all of a sudden you're like transported into this new world in a similar way to how the video functions where it kind of just the camera just pans and then like we're in the real world mm. um yeah i like the the writing style of the lyrics has kind of got this bit of a stream of consciousness almost surreal elements to it um I know for a fact they work at a record store and so like a lot of this I was kind of thinking about like working in retail and like your mind just wanders to like all these crazy places because there's nothing to do and mm. like you're just standing there a lot of the time. Yeah. So it is kind of there's like these lyrics about like can I go get lunch now or like uh, about swiping credit cards like swiping other people's cards <laughs> and stuff um, which is you know I felt like a nice kind of stream of consciousness uh, relatable thing. Yeah. Um. Once again, these yeah, like small yeah. actions that kind of comprise a larger thing. Yeah, comprise the life, ultimately. Yeah. Um, one thing that I really like about the arrangement is they always like, they build their parts um, really nicely across the frequency spectrum. So you'll have like, like, you know, a lot of like higher synths and then like these guitars in the upper mids and like, it's just really like mixed super well. Um, and I've seen them post about it online, like talking about like how people should think of arrangement 
uh, in terms of mixing and like balancing things across the frequency spectrum because it's actually helped me with like my own uh, like music and mixing and stuff because mm. I try to do that a little bit more yeah um and not have so many things competing for the same uh, space yeah um so that's something yeah that I that I appreciate about the music yeah it's nice. a cool song yeah. yeah yeah I loved it should we uh, move on to the next one yeah let's move on to the next one. The next song is called In Good Health. The last time you said I was wrong to bend my life around a song I climbed inside and exposed on to cry. I tied my stray hairs to the post and walk until another good example of like a song not ending with a full stop but kind of ending with an ellipsis where it's like it feels like you're listening to something that is like it's not the full story and it kind of leaves you wanting more in a really uh in a really fun and kind of satisfying way Hmm. yeah yeah nice um i noticed that uh the songs that we've picked they haven't really been the singles I just realized. Yeah, I think oh, I think Head Terrarium and uh, Laundromat were singles. Oh, yeah. But this song is not a single. I, yeah. I did, just because it went to the next but song and be. I was like, oh, this has like 100,000 plays. <laughs> <laughs> um, shook. Shook. That's a lot of plays. The only thing that matters, of course. Oh, yeah. Plays. I can't help it. I can't <laughs> help it. I, I always, <laughs> always got to look. I'm always interested. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was another one with a really like great chorus. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 th- I, love I think the my guitar f- bit that happens in the chorus. Whatever it is. <laughs> yeah. Um, how the guitars are kind of like separate or like they're playing in harmony or whatever, and then they just all of a sudden are in unison on the right and left, uh, in the right and left ear if you're listening on headphones. It's really satisfying. Yeah. And I actually had a point about that specific guitar part in the chorus where like the. Uh, like one of the main lyrics in the song is in good health and in good time, we could become perpendicular lines, um, which is a really interesting lyric because it's kind of like, it's a little ambiguous when you think about perpendicular lines, you think about, you know, two lines at a right angle, but uh, in terms of the ambiguity, it's kind of like, well, are these, if we think of the two lines as two people, are these like two people that are crossing paths and then Mm. like moving, you know, away from each other. Or is it like the meeting of the two lines? You know, is it people yeah, coming together? Yeah, clever. So that's what I found. Like, this was a really satisfyingly uh, kind of ambiguous line. Mm. But then in the chorus, I liked the fact that it you had these two guitar parts that are kind of doing their independent things. And then they're coming together for a moment, like mm. two perpendicular lines crossing. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. So I felt like that was, I don't know if it was intentional, but it was like a nice kind of yeah. expression of the, maybe it's part of the message of the song. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Message, also really, message that comes yeah. across musically as well as lyrically. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. I also really uh, like the, the first couple of lines. Um, you said I was wrong to bend my life around a song. Like, I like kind of the meta aspect of talking about, like, the impact that songwriting can have on your actual life. Because mm. I don't know about you, but, like, I've definitely, like, I, I have written songs in the past that have had actual impact on my personal life. Like, 
um, or like when you write stuff that is autobiographical and like you're writing about people that are actually real, then mm. like, you know, do, people can feel a particular way about do, it or, you know. Yeah, I was going to say. Not necessarily bad, but just like, you know. I was going to say, do you mean just, in the sense yeah. of like, like the song like affected other people, which affected you as well? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or like, I don't know, sometimes you express something in a song that you're not even sure what it means yet. And then, you know, oh, yeah. you can, uh, it can lead to conversations with people I, I remember um i remember one time there was like a basil's kite song and i was singing it to at like a, a basil's kite show and um and the lyrics were quite heavy and i remember seeing yeah. someone singing back the lyrics at me with way more intensity and conviction than i had ever sung them <laughs> and i was yeah. like oh my god that's a bit full on <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's like a real like shocking moment where you're like, oh, this is this is real. Like this can be impactful in like a good and a bad way, potentially. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah, just it's definitely interesting. Like I always wonder about it with uh, with artists who are really autobiographical, like how it impacts their mm. their life in a way. Like, um, there's an art, a documentarian called Carve Zahedi who has a show called The Show About the Show. And it's basically every episode is about the making of the previous episode. And ultimately, it kind of destroys his life because he just, um, I don't know, he's just he just reveals so much autobiographical detail and just, yeah. he really just causes drama in his personal relationships almost on purpose. And it's yeah, this I mean, that's bizarre, unsurprising. Like, art experiment. It's a really crazy show, yeah. but I, I recommend it. But yeah, I guess going back to this cool. song, yeah, I just, I, I like that little kind of aside and it also feels similar to, um, yeah, these kind of indie movies where they kind of break the fourth wall sometimes or you have characters who are playing people that have the same name as them. Mm. Or like there was a movie I watched where it's like a, you know, it's a boyfriend and it's two people that used to date and they're playing a boyfriend and girlfriend and they use like footage iphone footage from the actual relationship at the start of the movie <laughs> and it's like really like blurring the lines between where the character is and where the uh where the person begins and that i always find really exciting and kind of risky in art when that happens well oh, fen has gone all right it's just me now maybe maybe his computer ran out of battery that might be it I'm going to keep playing the refrain from my favorite song. I, oh, are we back? Hello? You're back. Yeah, I was just saying how I, I find it really exciting and interesting when um, people blur the lines between the character that they're presenting and their actual life. It's mm. I find it there's kind of this risk involved with that that is kind of you can't look away from in a way. Yeah, yeah. it's a bit intense, but it's also so cool. You have to sacrifice a lot when you do that. Yeah, yeah. I have like, yeah, I have like a lot of re respect for... Uh, people who can, <laughs> hmm. who can really do that um but also like it's kind of crazy hmm. there's a lot of co comedians i know who do that um yeah comedians do it a lot yeah. huh they really they're kind of putting their life out there a lot um yeah but i guess overall like um it's a really interesting album laundromat and i would definitely recommend listening to it it's super short mm. um there are like a lot of other cool songs oh, in there as well. I remembered what I was going to say. Sorry, do you mind if yeah. I jump in? Yeah, um, go for it. So I was reading on the Bandcamp that Laundromat was created in what Mayo describes as their first stable living situation, away from flat, difficult yeah. flatmates, tense surroundings, and abysmal, abysmal landlords. Um, I can totally relate to all three of those things. I think having a safe space where you can sit and create music is so important and it's so cool that um they made this album in that yeah that's really nice and maybe that's part of like the air of kind of comfort and uh like mm. happiness that kind of permeates through all the songs yeah um yeah it's like feels really um uh 
yeah, it's like this ha- this really warm album to listen to. Mm. Um, yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, the the rest of the album is interesting as well, like the other songs that we didn't get to talk about. There are a couple of like voice memos that uh, they've gotten from other artists just kind of talking about, you know, different things, talking about making music on one of the tracks, um, which I found kind of interesting. Um, and they're like these iPhone voice memos, which is kind of this intimate, low fidelity uh, method of recording. It's almost like watching a movie that's shot on like home video, mm. you know. Um, it's like that's like the modern lo-fi, like it used to be like tapes or whatever. Yeah, and and the funny yeah, thing so is, it's is it's so hi-fi. It's so hi-fi compared to yeah those older methods of recording, like the iPhone. Yeah, yeah. The iPhone microphone is like next level. Yeah, and I those little like monologues by these other guests I found really interesting. It is it is kind of like in um when you're watching a movie and somebody just like goes off in this random tangent, this random speech, mm. which uh, happens a lot in these kind of mumblecore indie movies that I've been talking about throughout this episode. Mm. You know, like in the Richard Linklater movie Slacker, it's just kind of like a series of these speeches where like, you know, like it follows one character and they, you know, end up in this situation where they're like stuck talking to this kind of crazy person or this person who has like all these ideas about the government or mm. about God or spirituality or whatever. So, yeah kind of felt like that these these kind of tangents would, would, um which is really nice would you put little miss sunshine on that list of movies that you're talking about yeah that's like a really like a successful version of that sort yeah. of movie like in terms of commercially successful yeah like a breakthrough kind of version yeah but movies that would play at sundance film festival hmm. which little miss sunshine won back in the day that's what kicked off its success yeah oh my goodness you, yeah, you know so much <laughs> that's cool nah well i don't know <laughs> nah, me <laughs> No, I, I I think I remember seeing that movie. I just love movies. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> I, I I aspire to that. I um I, yeah. I, we've talked about this before, but yeah, I didn't watch any movies for like a really long time. I just watched YouTube videos of people being like, yeah, "Okay, that's this is crazy. Movie. We're we're gonna do Squid <laughs> Game in real life." And then I was like, "Yeah." Nah, I can't. I can't do this. I got to start watching motion pictures again. Good mythical morning. <laughs> <laughs> um, um <laughs> but yeah ex- sorry ex- excellent choice with this album i um i'll have to listen to the full thing maybe maybe while i'm commuting to work and i need to celebrate the small things that yeah. make life nice it's a really lovely album and i kind of i this has been a really short episode but i kind of like that it's been a short episode because mm. it feels really really fitting um for the album it does feel fitting but hey we're not done yet fen because no we're not it's time we for... We need to listen to my song. And and you were telling me that the song you wrote goes for 12 minutes. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. It's okay. a 12-minute song. Cool. <clears throat> um, and I rec- it's like a kind of an iPhone voice memo uh, recording. Oh, we can really? get into it probably. Oh, a cool. A little bit, yeah. So that, so that was the iPhone voice memo song. Yeah. Um, it was kind of a, a combination of two iPhone voice memos, one for the vocals and one for the piano. Oh, I was going to say, if that's just one microphone, that's actually incredible that Insane. the iPhone can do that. Um, <laughs> yeah, it sounded like... The vocals I recorded while I was waiting for a train, and you can hear the train coming at oh, the end. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very slice of life. Yeah, that's good. I, I like that you took those concepts and implemented them into the actual recording of the song. That's cool. Yeah, I wanted to do something that was really short and just kind of painted a really small picture um, from which you could kind of extrapolate more if you wanted to. Yes. Um, I put the lyrics in the, yeah, in the can, chat. Can, can I? I'd love to um, know what the scary movie score you were listening to was. 
I was, yeah, I was home alone. I was making soup and listening to the score of the movie It Follows. Uh, it was a really cool yes. score. I really like that there are kind of these I nice waltzy that. kind of moments on that score that are like really pleasant, but then also there's these really stressful moments um, mm. where it's like, jump, 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 jump. Um, and it's also about like, uh, you know, you know, a creature or something that can take any form, you know, creeping up on you in the darkness and can mm. whatever, like, so I kind of was looking in my dark hallway and, uh, feeling a bit spooked. <laughs> and then I, uh, yeah, I changed the, I changed the song and I started listening to Laundromat by Pickle Darling. Oh, very good. Which is what inspired me to, uh, both write this song and to do this episode. And then... Yeah. Because you salted the pumpkin, which is yeah. And the pumpkin symbolizes Halloween. Halloween symbolizes spooky. <laughs> Boiling a pumpkin right. means you're destroying all of the anxiety and fear that you created for yourself. Yeah, salting the pumpkin with some yeah. delicious food. Yes, wow, that's a great interpretation. Thank you so but much. Really, the pumpkin represents a pumpkin. No, no, and it doesn't. I the refuse. Olive oil <laughs> represents olive oil. <laughs> As a representative of the Music Rules podcast, like I, I refuse your, uh, you refuse. I refuse your Artist is dead. interpretation. Um, yeah, yeah. One funny thing while I was listening to the like the score of the scary movie and like chopping vegetables, I was really like cha 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 cha, like going crazy. <laughs> Oh, that's horror movie stuff right there. I could feel like my heart rate increasing while I was listening to it. I was like, damn, <laughs> music really does have an effect on you. Um, I should not be listening to this while I am home alone yeah, chopping using vegetables a knife. with a large knife. Yeah. Um, Craziness. Can I quickly plug something? Yeah, you can. Um, Actually, no. We are. Sorry, man. We're doing really the, out of time. We're doing the. Um, <laughs> we're doing the musical uh, again oh so yeah i've written a musical called self-love we're playing it in melbourne um if you live in melbourne come along it's on october 13 and 14 sweet all right music rules music rules bye bye